each of the airlines, nobody really knows what the rules are, and they change from day to day. And so they may tell you a week ahead of time, you have to have this form, or you don't have to have this form. Then when you get there, they say, well, you have to have this form. So anyway, had a little testing at the airport, but got to resolve that. Got to um, Dallas, and um, they didn't want to send one of my bags, which we were doing an overnight in, in Cutter. So that meant a lot to me because it had all my clothes, it had um, swimsuit, I mean, everything. But, um, and I won't go into all the details, but um, um, God absolutely resolved it all in the nick of time. I mean, and he let me have my suitcase. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was very thankful for that. And then they did the but, um, but yes, the father just resolved it all. Uh, and what I did learn about that, uh, he nestled in my soul. It doesn't matter where I am, if I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, if I'm in Tanzania, in unfamiliar territory, he is in absolute control of the details of life. And just relax. Yeah. Just relax. Mm. It was a great lesson for me. Uh, the mission team is a um, um, picture on the left. Uh, the lady in the green shirt is Wynne Norin of Village Ministries International. She was the team leader, plus she's their operations director. She does all the administrative work ahead of time. Her gift is, is administration, and she in the Lord does a fabulous job with that. She is also our on-the-ground administrative person. Uh, Susie Hughes who attends Lynn's Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, was a teacher along with myself. And then on the right is uh, Peter and Caroline Simwa. <laughs> they are contacts in Kenya, and they are also BMI's contacts in Tanzania. They are just a great team. They are from Eldoret, Kenya, and they have been BMI's missionaries there for many, many years. Um, and uh, uh, the attendees at the conferences. Uh, at the day conference, we had over 125 ladies from Dar es Salaam, the, the mainland area. And then at the three day <coughs> conference, we had, uh, and it was by choice, they limited it to 35 ladies that were brought over by a two and a half hour ferry ride from the island of Zanzibar. Um, they were hand picked women pastors, wives of pastors, and leadership ladies from the persecuted churches of Zanzibar. Um, over the last five years, there has been intensified persecution in Zanzibar. The attacks include the burning of churches, attacks on pastors and their homes, rape and forced conversion of young Christian girls to Islam. So these mm -hmm. ladies and believers are under intense persecution in, in, in this area. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about the content of the conferences. Our theme <coughs> is always the God of hope. Uh, and we preface our conference with saying, no matter what you are going through in your life, you can always have hope because of a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. There is nothing that he is not great with. Um, and our theme verse is always Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and as I said before, the purpose of our conferences is teaching, uh, uh, grounding the ladies in the basics of the Christian faith, comfort <clears throat> to the trials of life, and encouragement uh, to stay, stay with God and His plan no matter how long that takes, that he is right there with them. And I, I wanted to share with you, I was just very strongly prodded in this one-day seminar um, to teach the person of Ruth. Uh, I already had Joseph worked up for, for the day conference, and I just thought, well, Father, you know, Joseph just would be great. And he just kept prodding, do Ruth, 
She's rude. So, I'm being rude. <laughs> uh, the lady on the left there is named is Lillian. She is the pastor of, of the ladies that attended, and she was in attendance as well. And she came up to Peter uh, after, after our conference, and she said to him, she said, Ruth was for me. She said, I lost my husband five years ago. It has been a tremendous struggle. Uh, she said, uh, and this is in the context of over there, there is, uh, you know, we're here, we try to embrace widows. We try to support them. We try to encourage them. Culturally there, um, it is like they are a pariah. You know, they are isolated, they are estranged, and sometimes they're even excommunicated, you know, which to us just sounds, you know, horrific that this is the case. But this is part of what she was battling. Um, so I was just uh, very thankful to God um, that he allowed me to hear that and just, um, you know, an encouragement to always listen to them. What he was doing, another lesson for me. Uh, the three things we taught there um, were salvation and eternal security, the Holy Spirit's ministry, and endurance and faith under suffering, it, with Ruth as an example. And that was the building that we were in as well. Uh, these are some of the pictures of the one day conference. Um, you see in the first picture on the left, you see Caroline Simwa being my translator. Uh, we work very well together, and uh, she was just a great, great asset. Um, the picture to the top right is Peter praying with the ladies that came forward after the salvation session. Uh, these ladies expressed interest in wanting assurance of their salvation. They were great students of the word. You know, they brought children. There were probably, I would say, about six or seven children there. If they needed to, they went in the back. They weren't running around or anything. But um, the children were very well behaved. And then you see uh, Caroline on the bottom right. Um, um, Caroline did three things for us this time. She taught in Swahili. And the ladies had a, a copy of this as well, the evangelistic track, May I Ask You a Question, which gives the plan of salvation. Uh, she handled that totally by herself. Um, and then um, she also helped me with two other classes. And this is uh, our group picture. And then the rest of the day, uh, on, uh, oh, we had on Sunday uh, was a rest day, and then we had our conference in the afternoon. But you see some of the children there as well. All the ladies, although they carry very huge burdens, um, are very joyful. They, they praise the Lord from a very deep place in their soul, and they appreciate the goodness of God. You know, I believe, you know, since their life is what it is, a lot of the distractions that we may have here they don't deal with, and, and they just have a real wonderful focus and concentration on him. Uh, the gentleman to my left in this photo is the pastor that brought the ladies over on the ferry for the conference. Uh, he coordinated all their travel from the island to different places on the island of Zanzibar, met them, brought them over, got them settled. So we are very thankful for that. Uh, the first night of our, con our three-day conference, we always spend um, seeing if any of the ladies need reading glasses. We, we have found a source for this online, and we, we take over, you know, glasses from 2.0 or 1.25 to 2.75. Uh, and the two ladies that you see there in the individual photos um, needed glasses. And I always think, can you imagine Can you imagine what it is like to never read your Bible, never be able to read your Bible, and then with a 50-cent pair of glasses from the States, you are able to read the Word of God. 
So this is always a wonderful time, and the ladies that need it uh, are very, very thankful. Oh, I'm so sorry that we changed that. I'm trying to do two computers up here. Yeah. So those two ladies uh, on the bottom. Hmm. We also took over dresses. This is part of the ministry that God has given us. There's a ministry called Sewing for Little Saints. And we took over 60 little girl dresses that are made uh, by a friend of mine up in um, Nashville and out in Houston. And um, they have all have a pocket. And it, the, inside the pocket, there's a little card that says, Jesus loves you. Hmm. So they are meant to be aid in evangelism. So now our conference, our three-day conference. Uh, like I said, it is uh, we are there to give the ladies encouragement about the God of hope. Um, we have six sessions uh, on the categories of God's grace, plus the essence of God. We added that class this year. We thought it was extremely important. Uh, we have four sessions from the book Healing the Wounds of Trauma. They are sessions on what are the wounds of your heart, how to recognize them, how to identify them. What does good grief look like? How can we grieve in a way that is healthy? Uh, and then a class on forgiveness. Uh, uh, and then we do have a session for them to have a, a personal reflection. We have two sessions on canonicity and how to study the Bible. We have testimonies, which I will share with you. Uh, both Tanzania and the USA. They have small group discussions. There is singing. There is fellowship time, and we always end with communion. Uh, like I said, the Father has put together a very complete program uh, for the ladies, and we are just very thankful again. Um, these ladies are great. These, these 35 uh, ladies were great students of the Word of God. I did encourage them, like Ron says, you know, when you study Paul's, Paul's uh, teachings, ladies, put on your thinking caps, and the Holy Spirit will teach you. He will be your great teacher of the session, and they absolutely did. I could tell on the class on spirituality that they it truly connected. We did the four circles of, you know, of life, and we did... Um, um, staying on the path of walking in the spirit and not getting off when temptation comes. Uh, I, I try to visualize as much as I can uh, with the ladies. Um, we, we did talk about Ruth again, and as you see, Lillian's picture. I'm so sorry. You see Lillian's picture on the, um, the left there. Her face just exuded God's peace just exuded God's and was really just such an encouragement to me. But we did talk about how Ruth, in very practical ways, picked up the shield of faith. And we also used Joseph as, as an example of suffering grace and how he dealt with betrayal and the injustices of life and that that was all just part of a master plan, uh, God's master plan for his life, and uh, um, which was, in the end, to save two nations. Um, and uh, did a class on dying grace. And the Father has so very graciously in the last five years um, given me three ladies as examples that I observed with dying grace. And he has allowed me to share those uh, with the ladies. Uh, personal examples always are wonderful. And then we ended with eternal or surpassing. Some more pictures of the ladies. Yeah. Um, Caroline on the top right uh, taught not only the evangelistic track this time, but she also taught part of my forgiveness class. And she did um, um, half of my class on the essence of God. And she, I have to tell you, she was just an, a supernatural natural up there. Uh, it is her niche ministry. I can really foresee her, and BMI looks to her and to Peter um, to carry this message that, that the Father has developed for us personally themselves. It is a very exciting thing to see. And you see when with her gift of administration on the left. As I say, the ladies were just excellent students. 
Um, as, as I shared with you, we did share four, uh, four classes from the book Healing the Wounds of Trauma. Um, at the end, we do give the ladies an opportunity to, we call it taking your pain to the cross, to have a time of personal reflection and get with the Father and give Him, give Him their pain, forgive anyone that they need to forgive, and come before God the Father with anything they need to be forgiven of in the past. Um, it was very heartfelt on everyone's part. Um, there was wailing, I have to tell you. There was just great anguish of soul expressed. Um, and many expressed afterward that they just had found great release during this time. They have seen horrific, horrific things. I'm going to read you um, one of the ladies. Um, after the class on forgiveness, a lady named uh, um, Oliver had this to say on the class of forgiveness. I am a pastor's wife. My husband and the associate pastor at our church had a sharp disagreement. This led to our family separating in our ministry, and I no longer spoke to the wife of the associate pastor. When I discovered that she was here at the retreat, I was uncomfortable, but knew I would just keep my distance. What I didn't know was that the Lord would use the teaching of this retreat to convict us both to offer forgiveness and seek reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We found ourselves seeking each other out after the session on forgiveness. It was a tearful reunion, and we are grateful for the healing that the Lord has done in our hearts. Mm -hmm. God, in his timing, had that set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the ladies on uh, uh, during the taking your pain to the cross. Uh, I wanted to share with you Esther's testimony. We had about six testimonies, and they were not all the same, but common threads um, ran around them. But I wanted to share with you Esther. She was just a delightful lady. She knew some English, so we, we spoke a little bit. She says, when we started ministry in Zanzibar, we had many difficulties. In fact, we would have given up except we were called to this work by, by the Lord. This was inevitably, each one shared this, we are called to be in Zanzibar. After fasting for 40 days, we had started to build a church building because of our faith in God, but the Muslims came and started to kill people in our area, so we were facing much opposition. Many Muslims came and physically attacked the church building. They pushed the walls down and destroyed the gates. They entered the church and set fire to various things, even burning plastic chairs that they had piled up in front and destroyed the building. They even um, many times come in and broke theses inside the church. It was a very hard night. The church was burned and we had nowhere to gather. In fact, a government official came and asked the pastor, how can you manage without churches, without a building? The pastor said, we have forgiven them and know that God will take care of everything. One of the members came to the church but was so upset by the pain of the persecution that he wouldn't pray. We were asked by many, how can you handle this? But our faith in God let us overcome. We got to work cleaning and repairing the church. While we worked, we were crying because we had lost so much. The police and even members of the army came to see what we were doing. The members were very angry and thought about attacking the camp of the Muslims, but our pastor said no. We will leave that to God, and we have seen God get involved. In fact, one of the Muslims who was involved with the burning of the church later came to a seminar at our church and got saved. Mm. Now he is a pastor. Mm. We pray for those who attack the church, and we have told them, we are praying for you, we have forgiven you, and we leave you in the hands of the Lord. We have learned much about growth through suffering in all of this. Mm. All of their testimonies, were impactful like that. Uh, we also had small group discussions. They would go over questions from what was taught to make sure that they understood it. Uh, and then it gave them a time just to, to fellowship as well. As I said, they are, they are um, very, very joyful people. And as you see at the top right, we had a lot of fun. 
to. Oh, one of our ladies, Susie, in the, the middle there, she loves to get up and dance, so she would <laughs> leave the dancing, and, and they just chimed right in. And, and like I say, they are very, very joyful people in the Lord. Hmm. This is our, our group picture, picture afterward. Oh, the one was skipped over here. So. Uh, we always end our conferences with the Eucharist. It's very sol very solemn occasion celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is our, our group picture. Uh, I do believe that everything that you prayed for the Father honored in a most wonderful way. The ladies were taught. Great comfort was brought to the ladies. They were encouraged in their walk. Um, I stand, I really stand amazed at what God does each time he sends us over and watch the strength of your prayers and the hand of God work. I'm so, I'm so appreciative. It is truly a, a work of grace. And I'm, and I truly am privileged to be a part of it. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers. Um, uh, just, and there's one other slide, but um, I just always like to quote the, the two verses that are a, a benchmark of this ministry, and that's Isaiah 55, 11, that um, no word will return void, but it will achieve the purpose for which God has has intended it. In Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Um, I do thank you for your prayers. And so where do we go from here? Where is VMI's mission for this ministry? Um, as I've shared with some of you before, they're in the process of developing um, a book with all the lessons that are presented um, so that they can... Uh, translate, edit it, translate it, and have something in a, in a hard copy um, to take and leave with the ladies there. They do get lessons, but uh, it is in a very abridged fashion, and we want to give them the complete les lessons. Uh, secondly, Peter and Caroline Simwa possibly are going as a team to present these, these lessons, not only to women, but to men. They, they may go and do men and women conferences, Peter teaching the lessons on grace, and then Peter then breaking apart, Peter taking the men on healing the wounds of, of trauma, and Caroline doing the women. We could perceive this being an, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, um, there's a possible upcoming conference in Kenya, which is a country right above Tanzania, um, where we were last fall but a possible conference there to train up to 12 ladies um, in the material so that they can in turn teach others. There will be a conference plus a training time. And then uh, there may be a, a possible training in the States for ladies interested in being a part of our team for this ministry. A couple ladies have expressed that interest. Um, it will be um, a lady, two ladies by ladies, um, either overseas or in the States. So, um, I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your encouragement. And just please pray for us um, and for this ministry as we just follow the Lord. I praise him. Thank you. Mm.